Welcome to the Parenting Roundabout Podcast. I'm Terry Morrow. And I'm Katherine Haleko. As parents and parenting writers, we can't help but see everything through a parenting lens. But as our kids have become adults, we find ourselves more interested in getting caught up on movies and streaming than on going over the same parenting topics over and over. So since we're pretty sure we can find parenting wisdom anywhere, we're going to talk about what we're watching, what we thought about it, and maybe what we can learn from it, if only what not to do. Watch and listen along and let's all make like we're doing something important for our families. Each Tuesday, we bring you our thoughts on a newer entertainment property, and for this week of July 22nd, we're continuing with A Gentleman in Moscow, a limited series on Paramount+. Plus. Uh, This episode was number three, called The Last Rostov. Um, Aw, gotta know by that title where it's gonna go. Yeah, so... R.A.P. Grandma. R.A.P. Grandmama, um, (laughs) who he thought, I believe the Count thought was like happily ensconced in Paris, right. but turned out to probably be in London in poverty. Right. It sounded like. Yeah. And, and, and not well. Right. And not only that, we had the return of Nina. We did. Now a teen. Where did... Okay, how old was she supposed to be the first time? Mm. Maybe like nine or ten. Yeah. Okay. That old, huh? She seemed younger to me. I don't know how old that actress is, but mm-hmm. this this version seemed too old for the amount of time that had elapsed. Right. And also had all the joy sucked out of her, which is right. sort of unfortunate. Yes. Um, but she seemed like like older, surly teen when she should have been tweener, just a little after. But maybe I was I was. Mm-hmm. Making the original Nina too young in my head. Yeah. I don't know. How old was she supposed to be in the... She was supposed to be like 9 or 10 in the book and then like 14 when she comes back? I honestly don't remember. <laughs> Come on! You're the book and expert, also with, Catherine. In the book, you can always quickly look back and forth at the dates That's and right. remind yourself of That's how correct. much time has passed. Yes. And it's a little... They had... A number of days, which I divided by 365, and it had been almost five years since he, his, the beginning of his captivity, I guess. Okay. So it didn't seem to me that Nina should be as old as she was, but perhaps she was just a particularly bubbly, uh, tweenish child when we saw her originally instead Mm -hmm. of a young, a younger girl, as I thought. Right. Um, Anyway. Send this version back to wherever she's been. We're done with her. (laughs) (laughs) Not so much fun, this Nina. No, this whole thing was a a tough one for the count. It really was. Although he did did, did get to dally with the actress again. So you go, man. After many years of failure, apparently. Mm -hmm. Insufficient gumption to go and actually knock on her door. (laughs) Right. A gentleman just sends champagne and waits for an invitation of her. <laughs> yes. So but, uh, he did he did have that going for him. That's and right, his, but otherwise. His friend Misha is still loyal. Yes. Got himself some good honey up on the roof from That's right. He made that kindly uh, beekeeper. Mm-hmm. He made that friend who basically saved his life later. Yes. Yes. Definitely. And uh, he continues to not be aware that the waiter who has a sign around his neck that says, I am a weasel, is in fact a weasel. Right. I mean, as we've discussed before, that portrayal is not subtle. No. That guy is not, is not being advised, okay, you're a character who's undercover as a weasel, and you want him to think that you're one of the kindly servants. Nope, nope, nope. <laughs> It's like, don't give a wine recommendation in front of that guy. He's going to take the labels up on the wine. <laughs> and he did. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, dear. But the other hotel staff continue to be yes. friends and allies. And adorably so. Yes. We have like the, the, the one guy says, don't you, don't you miss having people who appreciate what we do? Right. <laughs> it's like the count's the only guy left who gives them the proper respect. 
All right. Yes. Yes. So, although Emil, the chef, not going to be too happy for him. You had me made this great meal and then nobody showed up. I know. You made me keep it. Keep it warm. <laughs> it's a travesty. Yes. yes. But <clears throat> sweet moments with the seamstress making him his suit. That was very sweet. Yeah, he's... It, it, this episode was sort of like... You know, the the reckoning with how mm-hmm. out of touch yes. he is and how much has changed in the outside world while right. he's been within the yes. walls of the hotel. Yes, even though his life within the walls of the hotel have not been what he would like it to be, still so very right. much better than right. those on the outside. Mm-hmm. A difficult truth. Right. He, it seems like he's possibly on the verge to something approximating a friendship with his uh, jailer or whatever we call that mm-hmm. guy. Mm-hmm. He actually gave a name and I've forgotten it. So, Opsy or something. Oh, oh, Osip, I think Osip, maybe. Yes. Um, yes. That they're going to discuss literature and the, the finer things in life that he had yes. missed out on. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, could be interesting that he will not yeah. just be the enemy right somebody who is interested in the way things used to be while everybody else is busy chucking it out a window <laughs> <laughs> taking the labels off the wine yes. painting over the murals oh man <sighs> yeah not appreciating Anna's movie. That's right. Um, oh, yes. I was not sure originally what the deal is that she looked so stricken. Um, and then, yeah, if it's the, the reason he didn't come was that he didn't like the movie. That's not good. Yeah. Uh, so drink the champagne while you can. <laughs> that's right. I, She's great, though. I do enjoy she her. Really and also her her servant whatever yeah. olga her <laughs> disapproving like, servant <laughs> yes all right you're done for the night she just gives him the <laughs> biggest eyeball like yes <laughs> you better be nice buddy yeah well from a parenting point of view if we can return to nina for just a moment isn't yes. that just what happens when you send kids away they come back full of ideas that you do not care for and that cause them to look at you officially. Mm-hmm. Whether it's it's college or communist indoctrination camp or wherever it is right. that you send a kid away to, you know, they come back looking at you like, well, I know more than you. Right. And they have... Everything I believe is correct and everything you believe is wrong. Yeah. They're very we have all confident. <laughs> Very Every confident in their that. beliefs. <laughs> That's right. Yeah. And humorless. You just kept that little girl locked away in the hotel. Would have been fine. Right. She could have learned from him. Mm-hmm. But they just, she just, that's what you got to worry about. <laughs> and they grow They're up. Thinking for themselves. We can't yes. have that. No, no. I mean, is she thinking for herself? Well, that's, that's true. That's true. They think they're thinking for themselves. Exactly. That's... We do. We all did this. We were kids once. Yes. And you come home and you go, no, no parent. No, 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 no. That's not right. Right. This is the I way have, I have <laughs> figured things out. That's right. And I know the drill at this point. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the, the entire overhaul of the hotel is, you know... When you have kids and you have to, like, put everything that you love up on a high shelf and you have to put safety devices on all your furniture and then there's still grape juice on everything. And, (laughs) you know, it's just like you have to just say, well, this is the new regime. Right. (laughs) This is is the way it's going to be. There's going to be Legos everywhere. And, uh, you know, anything breakable has to just go away forever. And, uh, oh, they tore all the labels off all the cans because they were playing store? Okay, (laughs) well, it'll just be fun. It'll be a little mystery. (laughs) 
A um, fun little surprise every day. <laughs> <laughs> things can never stay the same. They can never stay nice. We can't have nice things anymore. <laughs> the right. China is all getting broken. Oh, dear. I know that look of heartbreak and betrayal I know. when your things are no longer as you like them. That's right. <laughs> Poor Alexander. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's right. Your things and your children, right? Yes, right, right. Are no longer. Are no longer the way you felt it all to be right and proper. And uh, while I think most of us refrain from wanting to throw ourselves off a roof about it, you know, there are days when maybe you just get in the car and drive for a while. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Thanks. I could just keep going. I could keep going. Yeah. It's a thing I can do. <laughs> I'm not gonna, but I could. Right. Just want you to know I could. <laughs> oh, oh out with the old. Out with yes. the old. But, uh, well, but the bees I'm, survive. That's our, like, yes. our hopeful word here is that the bees, we, I assume the bees survived and the guy wasn't just saying that to get him off the roof. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, he gave him some more honey. Well, That's true. But there was honey before. But you're right, right. I, I think. <laughs> he I, picked that up at the store on the way just, just yeah. in case. <laughs> there are more bees now. That'll give you a reason to live. Bees. Mm-hmm. Bees. Climb up I would here be jumping off the roof. Bees! Oh, no! <laughs> I'll take my chances yeah. with the ground. Yep. <laughs> but that's very sweet. Literally, because yeah. it's honey and also... Yes. <laughs> the wise the wise man. We'd never seen that fella before, had we? He's just a guy who's on the roof. Yeah, I mean, and he said he was a caretaker or the caretaker at some point. Okay. Um, but I feel like in the book... He was like living on the roof. Okay. Kind of on the down low. You know, like no right. one knew he was up there. Because the count's so. been going to the roof since the last episode, the end of the last episode. And right. some time has passed. You yeah. never saw that dude before? Yeah. Well, didn't he? Oh, yeah. <laughs> They were both I, trying to lie low, I guess. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I think that's, Don't that's ask right. too many questions. Just enjoy. No. No. You will enjoy. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Well. So next next week, uh, next Tuesday, we will we'll discuss episode four uh-huh. of A Gentleman in Moscow. It is titled Good Times. Good Times. Mm-hmm. Is, that, is that ironic or is that actually... <laughs> we'll there, find were, out. Were there good times in the book. Does he ever have good times again? Yeah, he does. Have your good times while you can, sir. I think things are going in the other direction. <laughs> uh, well, you'll we'll see. We'll, we'll see. see. <laughs> yes, and we'll see you back here tomorrow for a discussion of the 2004 series Lost. Woo. Thank you for listening. You can find all our episodes on Spreaker, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or wherever you get your podcasts. You can find recaps, links, and an opportunity to comment on our website at parentingroundabout.com. You can also talk to us on our Facebook page, on Instagram, or on Twitter, where you'll find us at Roundabout Chat. And please visit our Amazon shop at amazon.com slash shop slash mamatude, where you can find links to a lot of the things we've talked about over the years. 